Okay, welcome to a Wednesday, Wednesday morning, kind of mid-morning as usual. Uh, I've got a lot to talk about. Well, it's not, nothing's really dire today. We're not seeing watches, warnings, and alerts. Southern California, the winds are still strong. There's a PDS, a particularly dangerous situation in effect, which is a red flag warning on steroids, essentially. It's like, wow, this is really dangerous. Not just very dangerous, but really, really dangerous. Um, and that's going to last through this afternoon. But the winds have are not as aggressive, certainly, as they were a week ago or even just a day or two ago. Uh, so we also have um, dry conditions to talk about. We'll look at the mountain snow. We'll look at the surf. It's coming up in Hawaii. It's kind of mellow around here. This is Hawaii. This is a rocky point. And I was thinking about this the other day. Like that, I look at those waves. You can see people in the water. You can see someone getting out into the surf now. The wave, it literally looks like it's, to me, I'd call that six to eight. Hawaiians would call that two to four. I know. So it's an interesting thing that has happened over all the years of surfing. It kind of, I think, began in the 50s and 60s and even the early 70s that a lot of Californians start going to Hawaii. Like they're thinking we're all badass and stuff. And the Hawaiians are like, because the Hawaiian waves are much bigger, much more consequential, not bigger than Mavericks, but as a whole, because you're an island, they have access to just these unfettered fetches of, of wind and water. And so they started calling the waves, the Californians go, oh my God, that's a 15 foot wave. And the Hawaiians go, no, that is a six foot wave. And the Hawaiians will measure waves from the back Californians typically measure waves from the front. And so this ongoing, and there's never been, it's never really been resolved. I, I don't think, unless you know some, I don't know. Um, I was out, Jamie O'Brien is a friend. If you guys surf, you know who Jamie is. Hawaiian local, pipeline legend. And I was, I did, did, was hanging out with him one day and he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, bro, those are, uh, that's four to six. And I'm, no, Jamie, that's 10 to 15. And he goes, no, that's four to six feet. Dead, dead serious. Dead serious. I go, no, no, no. Look at the guy. The that guy's six feet tall, and the wave is. It's you, you. It's if you've experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. And it's not frustrating. I love it. I like that. that surfing has that sort of. I don't. Surfing has a. It's a. It's a tribal, unspoken thing. I think that's why I love it so much. I think that's why we all love it so much. And you new kids that are learning to surf. You kind of, I know you got wave storms and you're, and you're awesome, by the way. You all, you, the, all the new people that have come to surfing in the last 10 years, which it seems like everybody, it's awesome. I'm glad you're discovering, but please, please, please pay attention to those who came before you, whether it be Duke Kamanamoko or Buttons or Pee Wee up in San Francisco or, or uh, Richard Schmidt in Santa Cruz or Mickey Dora in Malibu pay homage to these people just do because there are legends and you're walking over them you're not paying attention to them and i hate to be i know that sounds all local like i'm not local i am I'm, no i'm not but uh, but i just think that that the culture and the the joy of surfing is so much more than catching a wave or getting barreled although that's that's awesome it's way more than that and um those old timers really exemplify that. And not the old timers, the new timers too. These people, Tommy Curran down in Santa Barbara. I mean, you should know these names. If you surf and you don't know who Tom Curran is or Pee Wee, are, Pee -wee is or Richard Schmidt, or, if you don't know who these people are, you're missing out. Okay, enough. Um, I was going to go into, I just did a little rant there. I wasn't going to the rock stacking thing. Um, here they are. This is Rocky Point, And I mentioned this the other day. Drives me crazy. I love you guys at Rockstack, which is sick. But it's, and I love, I get the zen of it. And I do see beauty in rock stacking. But when I'm somewhere like Yosemite and I'm hiking up to uh, Muir, uh, um, Yosemite Falls or Half Dome, I know it's supposed to be trail markings and stuff, but make them as lot as noticeable as you can because you're there because God, and nature, and all, it's all come together beautifully. It doesn't need your help. Okay, I'll get heat for that too. But I don't know, I feel that way. Um, okay, so there's Rocky Point. Sorry for the rants. I, I've actually, I'll be honest with you, I just, um, I just did like three takes on this and I was crushing the last take and I got a call back on my phone, which was somebody, was I was on hold for my hearing aids because I can't hear it because I surf too much. And I was on hold and they were going to help me with my hearing aids and they rang halfway through what was almost done. <sighs> 
Okay, I'm better now. All right, so here is uh, Southern California. They're in better shape right now. You can see no smoke. This is the satellite, the visible satellite image. You can see, you can't really see the winds, but you can see there's no fog along the coast because the winds are still blowing pretty aggressively offshore. This is the weather service out of Oxnard. We're covering LA first and we'll get to us in the lack of rain that we're, we're in, likely to see in the coming week. Uh, this is the alert for today, peak wind gusts in the red area. So you're looking between Ventura and Chart House or Ventura and Santa Monica. So here to here, that's it. That's all day today. And they're going to extend these warnings and concerns into Thursday, which is something that wasn't in, on the table yesterday, but it appears to be now. Let me pop that off. Um, let's move in here to this camera. I wanted to point this out real quick. This is kind of Oxnard, Ventura, right here. So that's out looking towards the ocean. I should know the name of this peak. Sorry, I don't. It's not on here. Probably is underneath all that. Okay, but I want to show you something here. So see this ridge line? and then see this ridge line, and then see this valley, right? So these ridge lines pinch the wind. The wind gets sloping down and gets pinched in between these ridge lines. That's the Venturi effect. That, right, it's the water hose with the finger over it, and that those, those um, channels accelerate the wind. Okay, I just described most of California topography. That's why California, one of the reasons California has a problem with fires, not just because it's dry Mediterranean climate, wet winter, dry summer, but because topography lends itself to this type of thing, especially when you've got an ocean out there just thirsty for the, 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 you know, the warmer air in, our, in Northern California for the offshore winds, the cooler air draws in the warmer air. So, um, or pardon me, the, <laughs> the cooler air draws in, the warmer air draws in the cooler air. Okay, so... Anyway, windy conditions, that's why, sorry for that confusion, I'm still flustered over the ear thing. Um, this is the, the channel we were just looking at right here by Santa Paula. So see that, see that funnel? So when I talk about, when we talk about, and then in that, so that's a, that's a large scale funnel, right? Well, look down here. Let's see if I can come in a little closer since I'm, I can, I think I can. Let's go here. Mm, I can't. Okay, you know what I could do? If I go out and push this way. Okay, well, look look here. See, see those channels right there? What's, what, that's, those are small examples up towards Carpinteria of that. See the, the, the funnels? So it's everywhere. It's all, all these ridge lines and the, the general um, topography is shaped that way. And it's shaped in sort of a east-west orientation, northeast to, to the uh, southwesterly orientation. This is C Street in Ventura. I bring this up because... First of all, air quality looks a little bit sketchy out there. A little bit, right? That would be smoke from the Malibu fires. You're just north. And then I was pointing out, you can see the offshore wind here kind of blowing off the back of the wave. Sea Street's a good wave, by the way. It's fun. Small today. But it's not howling right through there. So that's, that's encouraging to some extent. This is the air quality. Let me pull that up. And you'll see the air quality not so great through Los Angeles County. It's because the winds are kind of variable and have been over, overnight. They, the smoke sort of settles down when things cool down. So this is purple air, and you can see the, the air quality not so great. Again, concerns for tonight. For us, I saw something interesting I thought would illustrate another point. This is Bontempe Lake. This is Marin County. Stenson Beach out here. Um, Bolinas kind of over here too, and Bodega Bay up here. But what do you notice? Ooh, you notice smoke, right? Well, wait a second. It's, it hasn't rained in forever. This is what happens when you have rain in Northern California, over 180% of rainfall in Marin County. That, those are controlled burns. LA would not think of doing a controlled burn. San Luis Obispo would not think of doing a controlled burn right now, right? And here we are. This is the time of year, California, we do our brush pile burning. So this is a control burn in the Marin County watershed, which is near, it's, it's gone down. It's about 180% of rainfall average in the Marin watershed, which is traditionally an aggressive watershed for rainfall, as you know. Mount Shasta, that, they're doing well for snow there too, right? So in this northern part of the state, we're doing just fine. Uh, it would be nice to see rain. I am not gonna show you a long range computer model today because it'll show the same thing it showed yesterday and the day before and the day before. And that is um, rigid high pressure, everything goes around us, everything goes around us and we're dry. 
The next chance for rain now is around the 26th, and even that looks slim. We could go through the rest of this month with no rain. Um, and even Northern California, even Mount Shasta, although there are some inside sliders that could drop some snow here. Again, that's a live picture. I don't know why we don't, I, if I had a way to do this, like if I had like a, a wall with a big plasma, like a 90 inch on it, I would just load up that live picture and just leave it up all day. Just leave it up all day. Okay, this is the rainfall forecast for the next six days. That's Northern California. That's not, nobody's getting wet. These little green areas, um, I think those represent lakes. That's what that is. So we're not seeing any rain or anything. The Caltrans report up in um, Tahoe. This is Donner Summit. Watching the snow come down a little bit as we go into each consecutive day. Our rainfall, this time of year when you miss days of rainfall, your percent of average goes down pretty quickly because we are in the time of year where we get rain. We get rain and we're not getting rain in January. We'll get rain in February. We may see rain in January, but it's, it's, it is a drag that we're not. Here is the lake, Lake Tahoe. And where am I now? Emerald Bay? Yeah, Emerald Bay. Isn't that beautiful? And there's some good size. There's some good snow up on the mountains as well. But you can see things drying out a little bit, which is kind of a drag. Steamer Lane. Uh, again, higher tides. The mornings have been pretty high. The afternoon's coming out. A lot of water changing, but those tides are equaling out a little bit each day as we go through this month. Uh, but Steamer Lane, a little high on the tides. See how wobbly the wave is and thick it is. And the Hawaiians would call that wave two foot. They'd call it two foot. And I would call it three to five. Okay, so what I just said, uh, LA's got another day and a half under the gun. Um, they got a heck of a, of a situation down there that the cleanup is going to, as you know, uh, air quality, not so good down there. Up here, we're dry for the foreseeable future. We're not really seeing valley fog, and that's because of the high pressure and the, the offshore winds like you see here at Steamer Lane. And we're just waiting on the rain. If you want to go skiing, that's great, but be ready for icy conditions in the morning. Surfing is getting better as the tides kind of equal, equal out. And in terms of rain, nothing in the forecast immediately. Okay, thanks for putting up with that. Got into rock gardens, got into Hawaiian waves. I think I got into something else too, but it's just uh, it's one of those days. I appreciate you hanging in. Also, um, subscribe if you can. Maybe share with a friend because literally I, I, I'm trying to build this channel just because it's fun for me and some of you seem to like it. So that's enough for me. <laughs> okay, see you back here.